Let's talk about structure and responsibility as it relates to your view components. And specifically, I'm going to show you how you might want to watch out for compound words. And whenever you reach for these compound words, it may be a signal that something's missing. So we're going to use this example from a different series we have at Laracast, but don't worry, we'll go over each step. So we have a thread that consists of various replies. And if we take a look at the view tab, each reply is its own view component. And here's the data for that one. If we scroll down to the last view component or reply component, here's the data for that. So if we switch over to PHPStorm and we open up reply.view, here is the component for that. Now you might be wondering where the template is. Uh, we're using an inline template in this case. So, and this works quite well with Laravel projects. So we apply the inline template uh, attribute to the reply component, and now this can be uh, the template for it. And this allows me to reference Blade whenever I need to. It's, it's a good middleman between Laravel and Vue. So anyways, we can see right here, this is the section that represents the favorite. And that's what I really want to focus on in this episode, favoriting. So we have a reply, a reply can be edited, a reply can be updated, it can be deleted, but we can also favorite the reply. So take a look, if I click on it, it detects, oh, you already favorited this, so I'm going to uh, submit an Ajax request to the server to unfavorite it, and then I will update the count. So we can do this all at once, and if we refresh, it's reflected uh, on the server. And of course, we can toggle these however we need to. Okay, so that's great, but I wanna show you a little gotcha here. So we're gonna switch to PHP Storm, and I want you to notice these compound words. Favorites class, toggle favorite, favorites count. Okay, let's take a look at these really quick. So favorite classes, well, we're gonna to go to reply.view. Favorite classes dynamically determines the CSS classes. And we do this because, well, when you click on this, we have to change the class of the button. So we check to see, well, is it favorited? If so, use this class, otherwise use a default. All right, so that's fine. But then we see another one, another compound word, toggle favorite. So let's take a look at what that does. Okay, well, once again, that determines, did you already favorite it? If so, we're gonna submit an Ajax request to unfavorite the, uh, the reply. Otherwise, we'll submit one to favorite the reply. So once again, we have a compound word. Let's switch back, and yet again, another compound word, favorites count. Let's take a look at what that does. Favorites count is a property that delegates to a relationship to figure out the number of uh, favorites that the reply has received. So I want you to think about this. We have a reply component, but now it's littered all over the place with uh, functionality and data and logic related to the favorite. And we can easily spot that by looking for the word favorite and also looking for these compound words like toggle favorite, favorite classes, is favorited, favorites count. Notice all these compound words. So whenever you see this, very often, not always of course, but very often it's an indication that you're missing something. You're, you're missing some other area of responsibility. Maybe a different component altogether can be responsible for all of this. So let's give it a shot. I'm gonna go into my resources components directory and we're gonna create a new one here called uh, favorite. It's a favorite component. So we'll have our template and then our script. Okay, so we're just gonna migrate everything over. For example, back to reply.view, this computed property, well now that's the responsibility of the favorite component. So I will paste that in. Next though, we do need this data property. So let's come back and we're gonna take all of that and move it over. And we don't need everything though. So editing and body, those aren't responsible, but these two are. Now we do need this attributes reference or relationship, uh, but we'll come back to that in just a second. Next we have toggle favorite, favorite, and unfavorite. Okay, so we need all of those. So we can just take them and then come back to uh, favorite and add these to its methods object. So now what about the template itself? Well, let's see, let's go to reply.blade. And it sounds like we're gonna take this entire thing here and that's now gonna be part of the component, like this. And we might even be able to remove that wrapping div. So now the favorite component contains and houses uh, its own HTML and template uh, in the shadows, so to speak. So that means we could switch back and where we once had this right here, we can delete it entirely and replace that with a favorite component. But now I think we need to send in a property because as it stands, 
favorite does need access to the reply. So maybe we could accept that here and then update these references because that's what they pointed to. And we'll grab these as well. Okay. So now if we're going to accept that, I'm going to have to pass it through and we'll say the reply equals, and then we'll just echo that out with Laravel, and that will convert this uh, eloquent object to JSON. So that means if we switch back to favorite, yeah, we have these data properties that just delegate to the model to fetch some things they need. All right, so now, well, if we try to reference that favorite component, it's not gonna work. And if I open up Chrome DevTools to the console, unknown custom element favorite. Well, that makes perfect sense when you think about it. Right now, our reply component houses a favorite component, but where does that come from? We, we have no clue. So we need to pull that in. And we'll say import favorite from favorite.view. And then we'll specify here that the components or the child components associated with reply is just favorite for now. Okay, so I am running uh, npm run watch behind the scenes. So that compiles down. And if I now give this a refresh, there we go. We have the functionality back. And if we give this a test, we toggle them, refresh, that is reflected on the server, as you can see there. Okay, so now we've migrated everything over to favorite, which means back in reply, we can start cleaning this up. We no longer need this. We no longer need any of these compound words. All of this is now contained within its own component and its own responsibility. Look how much cleaner that is. And again, everything still works exactly the way it did at the beginning of this video. But now we have another bonus. We were talking about this idea of compound words and how it's a potential smell. Well, if we switch back to favorite now, all of those compound words can now become singular words. For example, a favorite component with a computed property called favorite classes. It then becomes a little redundant, right? And when you get to that point where it is redundant, you know you're on the right path. So this can now just be classes if you want. Next, toggle favorite, exact same thing. It's redundant. Let's just call it toggle. Next, favorites count, and I am selecting these all at once, by the way. Why don't we just call that count, the number of favorites? Uh, and then finally, is favorited? Maybe that could simply be, well, is this component currently in an active state? So we'll change that. Okay, so now if we take a look at everything, we've removed the compound words entirely. Oh, and by the way, I said toggles, I meant toggle. But yeah, before we were using compound words because we needed to be explicit that, well, this count or this class isn't related to the reply specifically, it was related to the favorite. So we kept tacking on that favorite keyword to be explicit about that. But again, often when you do that, it's a sign. It's a sign that maybe that should be its own component. And when you do that, once again, you can take that compound word and make it singular. And that's really all there is to it. Oh, and by the way, we were a little too uh, liberal with our search and replace. This would still be the favorites count on the model and the is favorited method on the model that comes from our PHP side. But nonetheless, we have the exact same functionality that we had at the beginning of the video, but I would argue that this is a far more clean and reusable approach.